Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, host of the Business Insurance Zone. All this week we've had Cheryl Moore on our show. She's the number one authority in indexed annuities. And on our show today, we're gonna talk about not only income riders, but the hot new addition of death benefit riders with some leading players in index annuities. Hold your breath, Cheryl sucks the air right out of the room in this show. Welcome to the Business Insurance Zone. Brokers Alliance and the National Insurance Clearinghouse present the Business Insurance Zone, a Bravo video event. Broadcasting in HD 1080p on Vimeo, YouTube, the Insurance News Net, Agent Navigator, BrokersAlliance.com, and on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and the Insurance Forum. And now your host, the Wizard of the Biz, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that spotlights insurance in your practice. Keeps you up to speed on insurance news and products. Features insurance strategies from top advisors. Get in the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. Our email address is thebiz at brokersalliance.com and you can call us at 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for any questions or quotes on life insurance, annuities, DI, LTC, or any of our group pension products. And of course, remember, I'm not a tax or legal advisor. So before moving forward with any of the strategies you'll hear today, always check in with your CPA and attorney. And of course, if you're a FINRA registered rep, always check in with your broker dealer compliance officer before moving forward with any of our products or plans. Now, when we're talking about today, we've been all week with Cheryl Moore, Life Specs and Annuity Specs Creator, Software Due Diligence. Welcome to our show, Cheryl. Appreciate that. Thanks very much, Steve. Day five with Cheryl. This is like day five under the spotlight, the <laughs> white hot spotlight of I due you were diligence. Say Christmas in August. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, no, we're broadcasting here, and uh, let me tell you, we're broadcasting from the surface of the sun. Yes. <laughs> Arizona. But I have to say, what one of the things. I like about the white hot spotlight of due diligence is we're trying to separate the players from the pretenders. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give our clients and our producers a heads up on what's going on in the market. In this case, today's show, index annuities, day two on that, day five on all of indexing. We've been with Cheryl all week. I am always wanting to know, and we talked about so many things yesterday. We were talking about you know the caps, the par rates, some of the secondary guarantees, which I think was a little kind of a cool item that I don't think we play up enough. Mm -hmm. But the big thing we're talking about today, because this has become huge, especially for the baby boom generation. I am the voice of the ARP nation. So <laughs> I just want to talk about income because right now we're all sitting there at the precipice of distribution. Right. Right. Some of us are like having it come up in the next couple of years. Others in the next over the next 10 years is going to be a big play for income. So when I see bonuses on some of these indexed annuities, I might be okay with that mm -hmm. because that's the number they're going to use for my income distribution. Mm -hmm. And I and so talk. Let's talk a little bit about indexing, but specifically income, not accumulation. Okay. Well, um, you know, back in the old days when I was just a young gal developing annuities, I was perplexed over the issue that we had trillions of dollars that were being held by these baby boomers and accumulating, but they weren't turning them into a retirement income stream. And I thought, well, what can we do? Only 2% of consumers annuitize. Why do only 2% of consumers annuitize? Do you know? I don't know that. Because the agent loses control of the money. Wait a minute. I asked the questions on the show, okay? Hey, just... sorry. We're, we're switching around here on All the right. last day. The agent loses control uh -huh. of the assets. The client loses flexibility. Mm -hmm. That's why some people call it a new aside. <laughs> yeah, instead and of a so new aside. Annuitization is a new aside. A new aside. Okay, so, that's a new one on for Steve Savant. There you go. Say, a new aside. So I came up with this concept called a guaranteed lifetime withdrawal benefit. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I put this optional benefit on any annuity, it can provide an alternative to annuitization. The client will be guaranteed an income for the rest of their life, no matter if they lived a 150 or 85, and wow. they still maintain flexibility. So and it's the lifetime agent maintain control. It, it's exactly like annuitization, but mm -hmm. you are paying for the flexibility with these income riders. Usually they have an explicit fee where it's gonna range anywhere from 25 basis points mm -hmm. to 80 basis points a year, depending on how rich the benefit is. But it guarantees the client an income for the rest of their life. Now, is that fee every year annually, even during distribution? Yes, and okay. even if the index returns zero or it's negative, you're still paying. You're still paying. And even if you haven't begun taking income, but you have opted for that benefit, 
you are going to be paying. Now the index annuities that are, that are really built for income though, they still will have a guaranteed principal to come off of, right? Even if they got zero during the accumulation Absolutely, period. guaranteed return of principal right. and guaranteed return of interest at the end of the term with every mm -hmm. indexed annuity as well. Mm -hmm. So if I'm pr preparing for retirement and I like the idea of I can never outlive this and halfway through it, I, I might need to get my real cash out of it mm -hmm. because we're not really annuitizing at all. Right, Right. that's the nice thing about nice it. Thing. You maintain that flexibility. I've noticed that the actuarial tables of the 1980 CSO, as an example, uh, the guys generally died about a year either side of the table. We're the most predictive, predictable of genders. Mm -hmm. But women decided to blow by the tables and live a lot longer. Right. There are women off the 1980 CSO that are on these old annuitizations that are killing it, yeah. taking it to the bank. I mean, the My own ever... grandfather took them to the bank on annuitization. I mean, I, th think about the 2000 CSO. If you're a standard male and you're going down at 85, and now you're in your age 95, you're blown by the tables. Exactly. I mean, these are good numbers. <laughs> and I, I, you know, the Guinness Book of World Records. Just a little side note: the Guinness Book of World Records. That gal died at 121 up in Canada. I mean, yeah, wow. I know. And, and think about this: every day, Willard Scott says happy birthday to a handful of Americans that are turning 100. If it took him. If you want to say happy birthday, everybody's turning 100 in the United States, it'd take them 90 minutes a day, 365 days a year. So, I mean, to think that people aren't going to make it to 100 yeah, is unrealistic. just is unrealistic. It's happening now, and it's the largest demographic in the geriatric market. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think about this, oh my gosh, I might be getting this, yes, for my life, and I could beat the tables. Once I cross over the 2001, right, exactly. mortality tables, guys and gals, I just think that this could be huge. It is huge. And really, if you ask me, annuitization's huge. Mm -hmm. But for the people who say, I want to be able to pull out more if mm -hmm. I have an emergency, or what if I want to move my money to another right. insurance company, this is a good and viable option for them to consider. Well, when I think about preparing for retirement and trying to lock down at least part of my portfolio, part of it, mm -hmm. guaranteed. I know what I'm getting going in. Here's the worst scenario, day one, I know it. 10 years from now, I know that's the worst. I kind of think that brings some comfort to the baby boom generation, only because we went through the 2008 and nine debacle. And because we've had to retool our thinking, right. part of our portfolio, and some people even have went farther than I'm just gonna say, I have part of it, but some people say, I can't handle all the, of it. the hassle anymore, it's going all of it. Right. So remember, everybody has risk thresholds, risk tolerance, mm -hmm. and a lot of it has nothing to do with math. It has a lot to do with the psychology of the client. Absolutely. What can they bear from a psychological point of view? Well, I think at least people have come to at least to my way of thinking saying, hey, the minimum is a third to half's going in there. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a lot of people who are contacting us at annuityspecs.com lately saying, look, I had my money in a 401k or a variable annuity or stocks and I lost money in 2008 mm -hmm. and I've been reading about the indexed annuities and that appeals to me, can you tell me more? Mm -hmm. So I think our story is definitely getting out there more than it ever has before. But what is the appeal? You know, consumers are calling you, you're really a due diligence, you don't you really deal with clients, you don't deal mm -hmm. with the retail market, but they're calling you with the, uh, is that that hot? Is that oh, that yeah. hot? Okay, so, it is that hot. So how can I turn that into our producers hearing that you're taking these calls, inbound calls, and we're not giving leads away, by the way, no. on this one. But I'm just saying, what are they talking, what is the heartbeat I think what you can do to harness this and take advantage right. of this, number one, you need to know that consumers today are more financially savvy than they ever have been before. They are looking to be in control of their own money because mm -hmm. they don't trust somebody else 100% necessarily to choose what's best for them. And they wanna do their research because the internet has provided a ton of information that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. So they're in the process helping to make the decision instead of relying 100% mm -hmm. on your agent. Well, the agent can do his job in lassoing and taking advantage of that by having a strong web presence. Mm -hmm. Having a lot of good information available on their personal website so that mm -hmm. they can get leads and they can get new people coming in. I'm an insurance licensed agent. I've never sold a case. I pay another guy to come over and sign my apps when I buy my own insurance or annuities. That way I don't lose my credibility as a third party neutral expert. But you know, we get sometimes six emails a day from consumers saying, I want an index life insurance product or I want an index annuity, will you sell it to me? My mm -hmm. answer is always no. But if they're contacting me and I'm just a lady who writes about them, Think about the potential for your agents. Well, I think that uh, you just gave me an indirect reason why we're totally involved in social media. 
Because you just said, we're all over the net. We are tweeting. We are texting. We are blogging. We are doing articles. (laughs) No, you're overwhelming me with it all. We're doing articles and we're doing uh, all kinds of things. Videos. Videos on the web in HD 1080p. But uh, but I think the reason I bring this up is because we just received, as, as absurd as this sounds, we just received our first case off a tweet. I mean, wow. I'm like, I can't believe it. I was Twittering, you know, and all of a sudden some guy asked me about a life product. I said, oh, this is the carrier. Here's what I would do. And we sold a case off a tweet. So, so it's out there. So social media, I mean, you're just giving, you're just coming into our wheelhouse right. because at Brokers Alliance, out of everything that we have, we're awesome. We have an awesome inventory. But the big thing we have beyond our inventory of products is we actually own right now, <laughs> for whatever small time this is, we have a window where we own the social media market. And people want to know about this stuff. Right. And we're going to, when we put our show out and distribute the show t- in, to our normal non portals like, YouTube and Vimeo, we're going to get traffic off this. Absolutely. People are going to ask what's there. Now, when I'm thinking about income, uh, you see a lot of income products. Does any one, not so much carrier, but does what they're doing, what that carrier is doing, does it like, hey, this is really a good deal? Well, there's basically two different camps when you're looking at income. You've got the carriers that offer a big upfront bonus on the income value. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the carriers that say, well, we're going to credit a guaranteed rate to that income value every year as long as the client defers income. Usually the guys with the big upfront bonuses, like the 25% bonus on the income value, are going to be your best bet if you're going to take income out in the first few years. Mm-hmm. But if the client's not taking income, let's say they're age 50 mm-hmm. and they're not going to retire until age 62. Well, you don't want them to start taking income in the first few years. They're going to be penalized and taxed. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is allow them to accumulate interest on that income value until they have a great, big, huge benefit Mm -hmm. base to draw down from. And so the people who offer, let's say, a guaranteed rate of 8% every year, as long as client defers income, are going to do a lot better in that kind of scenario where they're not taking income right away. So when we're taking it and how long, that's going to be a big issue. Huge. Well, listen, when we come back, we're going to be talking with Cheryl more in our second segment. We're going to be talking about indexed for death benefit. I mean, I thought I never lived to see the day. I wanted to be pure. It's either about accumulation. It's either about income. Now Cheryl's introducing a whole new concept index annuities with death benefits. You're listening to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant. When we come back, I'm going to pepper this young gal on the issues of death benefit on an index platform. Savant here. For years, I've heard that less than 2% of all term life insurance ends in a claim. That's not many, and clients had to die to receive the benefits. That's the old term insurance. Now start selling term insurance. The term insurance that covers your client through a chronic illness, a catastrophic event, or a terminal diagnosis, and pays their monthly premium during extended periods of unemployment. What term life insurance can do all that? Western Reserve Alliance Advantage Term with Living Benefits. No other term insurance product bundles so many solutions to life's unexpected problems. And all in one policy. So for more information, call Brokers Alliance 1-800-290-7226. Stop selling the old term. Start selling the new. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance on your practice. I'm Steve Savant, your host, financial color commentator, and interviewer extraordinaire. I have with us, of course, Cheryl Moore, and you can watch all of our shows all this week out on Vimeo, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and our on-demand section at brokersalliance.com. And remember, you can always catch us, write us at our show, the biz at brokersalliance.com, or call us, 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for any quotes or questions you may have on life insurance, annuities, DI, LTC, and of course, group pensions. And remember, I'm not a tax or legal advisor. So before moving forward with any of the plans that we discuss or any of the strategies, always check in with your CPA or attorney. And of course, if you're a FINRA registered rep, always check in with your compliance officer before moving forward. Now, Cheryl, we talked in the last section, and that part I actually got. 
annuity income indexing. Okay, got it. And especially for us who are boomers and we're getting ready to trigger some of this distribution, that's huge. I love those bonus rates. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm there on that. And I was looking not only at life or the annuity spec, which tells me everything I need to know on the contract guarantees as well as current company practice. I love that. But I'm looking at our own spreadsheets, right? And saying, wow, look at these numbers that we've been producing. Mm -hmm. And look at our spreadsheet. These grids are huge. Right. Now when I look at it, now you want to turn the whole table and you're telling me about death benefit. Absolutely. Uh, why did I thought I didn't care about stuff like this. Well, you know. Uh, I guess I do now. Our market has evolved. And certainly product development has evolved. This has become more a function of people maybe having bad health. You, you talked earlier about impaired mm -hmm. risk people. Well, what do you do with those clients who are wanting to leverage their premium and provide some type mm -hmm. of benefit to their uh, heirs, but they can't qualify or they mm -hmm. can't pass through underwriting? Back in the old days, it was, hey, you better find a simplified issue single premium life product. Mm -hmm. Now you can sell them an annuity. There's absolutely mm -hmm. no underwriting. And what we're seeing is carriers offering, you know, anywhere from a benefit that is the premiums paid accumulated at four to six percent mm -hmm. as a death benefit to offer now, is there a charge for this? Yes. Okay. There so there is a charge. So let's say I have nothing four in life is free, Steve. Uh, you know, I'm stunned by that statement. But okay. Four four to six percent on my death benefit growth. Mm -hmm. for death benefit, right? Right. Now, and what's my basis point charge to pull a kind of a return like that? Depends on the company and the benefit, but anywhere from 25 basis points uh -huh. to 70. 70 basis points, okay, that's not too bad. No. All right, so four to six, now this is just the growth for a death, death benefit. benefit. Okay, so generally people are buying this, as you said, they might have impairments, maybe they're substandard, they can't really get life insurance or it's not priced very good. Right. They could get a leverage of four to six percent on this and without any underwriting. Right. And that's only going to be, now they're still going to have, they might have accumulation on their, their actual returns on cash. They might even have an income writer on you this. You can still use still the money in the contract okay. and you get this death benefit. Mm -hmm. But I can offer a death benefit that's much more rich than that even in the indexed annuity market. More than the four, four to six. Right. Okay, let's say we have- well, Wait a uh, minute, is this like a commercial? Wait, no, there's more? No, no, wait, there's more. If you have one of those income writers uh -huh. or GLWB on the contract, there are some insurance companies that say, we'll pay out the benefit base or that income value to your beneficiaries on death. Think about that. If your client puts in 100,000 mm -hmm. premiums- Now you're not talking about joint survivor here. Nope, not talking about way joint survivor. Way different. Exactly. So, so I die. You, I did not execute You put in $100,000. Right. The S&P 500 went down every year for 10 years. So your account value at the end of the contract is $118,000 with your mm -hmm. guarantee. With my guarantee. Well, every index annuity pays the full account value on death. So typically your beneficiaries would get the 118,000, but you have an income writer on your contract. And it said that every year that you delay income, they would guarantee 7.2% interest on your income value. So at the end of 10 years, we know the rule of 72 says it's gonna double. So mm -hmm. your benefit base or your income value is now 200,000. If you have the income rider with the death benefit. Exactly, okay. and there are some companies now that are saying, hey, we'll pay out that $200,000 figure instead of the 118,000. Mm -hmm. Now, and then I am I taking that in a lump sum or no, I'm taking that in a in most cases, you're taking it over a minimum five-year period. Okay. Now, when I look at this, I mean, that number is way, 200 is bigger than 118. Exactly. Okay. So how much does it cost? Because I'm sure, since you just told me nothing's free in life, <laughs> is there there's going to be a charge for the income? It's included in the cost of the income writer. So the income writer and so the death benefit? So typically, let me just give an example, where your income writer might typically cost 60 basis points, maybe by paying out that enhanced death benefit, now it costs 85 basis points. Yeah, so I'm paying 85 for the privilege of guaranteeing that right. language, right? Right, and and here's something that I think is important for all of your agents to understand, Steve. When you look at indexed annuities, every index annuity that's available today pays the full account value on death. Mm -hmm. So there aren't market value adjustments applied, right. there aren't surrender charges applied. And I told you that every index annuity is priced to return one to 2% better than fixed annuities that are being issued today. So if my current fixed annuity rate is 3.4%, that means index annuities issued today should average out 4.4 to 5.4 over the life of the contract, which means beneficiaries are gonna get 4.4 to 5.4 mm -hmm. on top of the premiums paid as a death benefit anyway. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing for something like this is paying to have the word guaranteed in there. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteeing that the death benefit will not be lower than 
X percent on top of the premiums paid. Well, I'm thinking if I was paying every year on 100 grand, 85 basis points to guarantee, and that number could be better, it just won't, but I'm talking about the guarantee, 200K at, let's say, my 10 year, if I die, I income, my beneficiary is going to get 200K, and then that money is going to be spread out on whatever the, uh, for the life of the beneficiary, I would imagine. Well, they can do it for as short as five or, years. Oh, five year payout. I love that. So five year all the way to life payout. I'd like to do some math. Uh, we should do some math on that when you and I do a little due diligence there and run some illustrations because I'd like to see based on the specs you showed, mm -hmm. right? And then take our spreadsheets and do a little math and figure out who the players are in this space. Because this is a, I think this is an unknown space for most agents and, and It's producers. emerging, it definitely mm. is emerging. But one thing that your agents need to keep in mind is suitability. Mm. That's become a huge issue in the annuity market. And if a life insurance contract is going to be a more suitable purchase for the mm -hmm. consumer and they can make it through underwriting, then you need to be talking life mm -hmm. insurance. Don't be offering the annuity with the death benefit rider just because of well, the flip, the flip side of that is, is I could go to a client and say, I know you're, you have some impairments here, but the numbers still are better with the life insurance than it would be the annuity. But a lot of people say, well, you know, you're just trying to sell me life insurance. I don't want life insurance. I want this. Right. So the flip side of that is, is yeah, the consumers, there might be suitability issues, but I have consumers push back anyways. Oh, it's life push back. Exactly. Right? So we'll have to figure out what that, what that middle ground is. If I do both, I'd like to say, I have to figure out at what age is a table rated life contract, right, equal to the income slash death, death benefit death. rider that is on this index chassis. To me, that's the play. And by the way, by age group, we could probably figure this out and post this as an actual spreadsheet grid to say, when should you do life? When should you do the annuity? Let me complicate your grid for you and say, let's add single premium life to the mix well, because now why i have would that tons work? of carriers who have simplified issue single mm -hmm. premium index life so if i take single premium index life do i have a single premium indexed annuity it looks just like an annuity so it's ditto it looks just like an annuity and it's simplified it's simplified issue and are they eating all the tables all the way up or to what tables are they doing that with it depends on the carrier. Uh -huh. It depends on the carrier. So are there players out there that you've seen, Cheryl, that I said, this is worth looking at? Absolutely. But, you know, I get tons mm -hmm. of objections from insurance agents saying, well, I do annuity. I don't do life. Right. Well, you know what? Rates are horrible right now. Why not take well, advantage? Well, I just love the what you just said, though. He says, I, I only do annuities. I said, but, but then you're not being suitable. You can't be suitable to exactly. all Exactly. You need to be able to offer an array of products. Right. But a lot of agents who are just getting in maybe feel like they're not competent enough with life insurance products that it's more mm -hmm. complex than annuities and you know what single premium life is a great way to bridge that gap and move mm -hmm. over because it looks like the annuity but it doesn't have all the complex underwriting that the mm -hmm. life does it's simplified issue and it can help move you over there now on the simplified issue on the single premium index do i still have do i have any issues no blood no urine exam no ekg yes. most of it's some of them are just asking 10 questions on the app and that's that's your and 10 that's questions it. if you pass so i have to look at my single premium index life against having it like a single premium index with this income death benefit rider and look at on spending 85 bips over here i have coi charges over here mm -hmm. admin i have to look at which is going to give me the right. best performance but your annuity is going to have much less attractive caps than your life product because I got more space to move. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna have to look at that. I mean, we're gonna have to try to see, see it. Cheryl, we should come up with our own personal grid and then throw that out on the there web and go. see what it goes. Now, it is, is, I like this segment because it's another one of those out there subjects, you know, when mm -hmm. we're talking about something we're introducing to our, our uh, producer base, which I think is really important to bring on. I have income, I have, I have death benefit, 85 basis points. Doesn't sound like a lot for the bang for the buck that I'm getting for this. It depends on the benefit too. I mean, some companies are going to be more oriented toward offering a richer death benefit mm -hmm. than they are an income benefit. Mm -hmm. So you really need to look at what is the client's objective mm -hmm. and am I working with the best company slash product for that objective? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I'd rather just separate the whole, I'm a purist by heart, so I'd rather just say, 
if you really need life insurance coverage, I'm going to try to go that way. Right. I'm going to try to see what disease, what company treats your malady or your impairment the best, and then try to build a platform that reflects that and gives it good econom economies of scale. I need bang for the buck, uh, premium to death benefit ratio. But on annuities, sometimes I'm looking for I'm looking for the raw numbers. I don't want to complicate the cost issue, mm -hmm. and I have to say to myself, "Gee, do I have income?" If I try to get income and death benefit, is one suffering over the other? There are some companies that say it's a you know, either or situation. Right. You get the income or you get the death. Right. But for most companies, they're saying you can have both. Mm -hmm. You just you have to pay for it. Now, let's say I pay for it, but am I still? is it still okay? Am I, is, is the death benefit suffering or is the income suffering because I'm doing both? Or no, they're, they're really Well, autonomous. if you take out income, normally your death benefit is going to be okay. reduced by the amount that you're taking out. And mm -hmm. it depends on whether it's proportionally or on a dollar for dollar basis. You need to mm -hmm. check with the carrier, but yeah, if you take money out, you're still going to have a reduction in the death benefits that's payable. Now, now this is an emerging market now. Not everybody's playing in this space yet. No, this is pretty new. And in fact, in the past 30 days, mm -hmm. I've had three new companies offer these type of benefits on their products. Now, how many have been, before these three new ones joined the-, the We only the, had about three companies okay, that Okay, so it. really, there's still only a half a dozen carriers. Right. Um, I'll let you do this on the show and they'll owe me big time. <laughs> the name a few of these cars did you say that are playing in this space? Forethought Life. Forethought Life. Allianz Life. Allianz. Great American Life. Great American. Midland National Life. Midland National Life. North American Company. N Nicola. Yeah. Wow. That's a. Who was that second one? Fourth, you said Forethought and. Forethought Allianz. Allianz. So now we have six people playing in this space. We're going to have to look at this. I, and maybe we'll touch base with you on maybe a telephone call hookup or something like that. And we'll just do it because I want to find out more about this death benefit income scenario because it kind of it solves two issues. I've, I've got a shameless plug for you, Steve. Yes, what's that? Go to annuityspecs.com. Go to the search and click Enhanced Death Benefit, and you'll be able to see the provisions on everybody's Enhanced Death Benefit. I did not annuities. set her up. <laughs> it's not on purpose. I appreciate it. Cheryl, it's been a great week with you. Thank you so much for coming down here to Arizona and doing this show. Oh, thanks for having your, me. Your products are excellent. Well, listen, again, you can contact us here at the show at the biz at brokersalliance.com or call us toll free 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, or hop out on our website, www brokersalliance.com where you can view all our videos and catch all the action that we're into here at Brokers Alliance. I'm Steve Savant. You've been listening to the Business Insurance Zone. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for the whole week. Get into the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. This has been a Bravo video event of the National Insurance Clearinghouse and Brokers Alliance, one of the largest distributors of insurance products and services to a nationwide network of insurance professionals. You can contact Workers Alliance at WorkersAlliance.com or 1-800-290-7226, extension 147.